And so one of the, the projects that we are launching today is the idea to build in here a sort of uh, equivalent of what has been done in Europe that has been pretty successful. This is called a leaders club. So meaning uh, the European Commission, before starting to regulating uh, all the digital, has asked a group of successful entrepreneurs what they believed was relevant. And so they created what is called the Startup Manifesto. And the Startup Manifesto has been really important because it's pointed down a list of 22 relevant things to be done. And so one thing that we are trying to do over here is to do something similar to the Leaders, Globe, Leaders Forum. We call it uh, the Silicon, Startup Bureau Comes to Silicon Valley Sounding Board. And to create a group of uh, relevant entrepreneurs, investors, uh, executives, from European origin, but they're living in here. That can be available to help and support the policymaker when they are coming here. And so today we have uh, a portion of this group, and I'm happy to call on stage um, Auriel Oyon. Ademie <laughs> Meayo. Andrew J. Scott. Fabrizio Capobianco and Michel Vendel. So thank you guys for being here and for at the end of uh, the conference. So tomorrow they will meet uh, Commissioner Hottinger and they will provide uh, some uh, recommendations, some feedback, some indication. So the idea is to start discussing about what is needed in Europe to, on the one hand, uh, to fix one problem that we have, this is the digital single market, that is still a project, not yet a result, and B, what we can do to improve the startup ecosystem, and particularly to have more startup able to scale up. And so I would like to ask you all really sharp and quick to provide us what, are, what will be your three top priorities tomorrow addressing the European competition in the, in the person of Commissioner Hottinger. And so let me start from Adayemi. I think Adayemi is a phenomenal history as an entrepreneur from Spain. He co-founded 20. He sold 20 to Telefonica for 100 million. Then he started again with Identified, get funded by Capri Convention, Tim Draper that will be with, together with us tomorrow morning, sold to Workday, and today you are working still at Workday. So, Ademi Yemi, what are your three top things that you believe are badly needed in Europe today if we want to move one step forward? Well, I think that, you know, at a, at a very high level, um, and, uh, and this goes a little bit macro, but I think the idea will be that Europe was truly, yes, one big single country and one big single market. That will be overall um, the biggest change, but given that we might be a slightly far away from that. Um, I think that the three things that could be implemented today in order will be to have the government actually pour more money into private venture capital, which is something that the US government started doing heavily in the 70s and the 80s, and uh, really uh, gave, gave a big push to the venture capital community here in Silicon Valley. And actually Draper is one of the main examples of that. Um, I think another thing that I will do is try to replicate the successful uh, incubator models uh, and in particular Y Combinator. Um, and then the third part is what we are doing today, which is trying to involve more the European entrepreneurs into tighter relationship with policymakers. So, you know, both policymakers are more aware of yes, the way we are looking at things. Thank you. Moving to the investment side, Michel Vendel, uh, you define yourself as a French, uh, Swedish, uh, Finnish mix, right? And you have lived uh, in Europe for 15 years, 20 years in the US. Now we are here, is general partner at Next Adventures. It's a fund that invests both in European and US company. So what are your three top priorities or two priorities? What do you really think is relevant today and what is badly needed today? So I, I, I fully, fully agree with the fact that we need to get uh, the European governments to put more of that money into uh, 
into private funds, but, but also we clearly, or the European Union has gotten sort of overexcited with, with bringing in all kinds of rules and regulations into the fund business in Europe, which leads to that it's very hard for smaller funds to still produce the kind of returns because they just run up enormous costs on, on meeting all kinds of regulatory stuff. I mean, it's really good that we have, uh, we have things like anti-money laundry uh, uh, doctrines and stuff like that to fulfill, but, but you should see the amounts of paperwork that, that has to be filled out and how much we have to bug our LPs to actually have them put money into the funds to the extent that we have had lots of family offices in the US we just says, screw it, you know, it's too much work, it's, you know, we never have to answer these kinds of questions in the U.S. Why would we invest into European funds? So I think that they need to e ease up on some of, some of those types of things. And, and actually, given that the venture industry, to a large extent, really is invented here, I think that, uh, that the European Union, in Rather than putting all of the money, as we saw earlier on, I think 40% of the funding into European funds comes from, from the government or, or, or some EU sources, I think that a little part of that money should go into actually educating venture capitalists. I know from my point of view, I, I, can, I started the fund, which is a European US fund, when I was here, and co-investing with some of the big guys here gave us an enormous amount of, of knowledge and insight into how deals are structured, into how boards work, into how all kinds of things actually work. And of course, the next day, I always move that information over to my partners in the European offices we have. And, and that way, it got, got into sort of our system. But we're, we're a small player. so. So there is, there is hundreds of other small funds that could benefit. So I actually think that the EU should put some money into educating private equity or sort of small VCs in different forms. Agreed. That's the one I think that we're actually doing as, as minor bridge. <laughs> Moving to France, Oriel. Uh, Oriel, just to give you, it's different to wrap it up about the things that you have done. So he's an investor among the investment he did invested in BlaBlaCar really early or the early stage. By the way, information for everybody. Nicolas Bourson landed in America, but in Chicago. And so <laughs> he will arrive to tonight, later tonight in, in San Francisco. And then uh, currently CEO of Apps5. Oriel, what are your two, three top priorities? Um. Well, uh, it's very hard. The, the, most of the time, a, a success for a startup is starting with the product. Um, and the team makes the product. And to have a good team that makes a good product, you need good engineers. And I think right now in Europe, there is a very, very strong difficulty in finding um, uh, good engineers in quantity. So when you reach a certain scale of, 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 of company like BlaBlaCar or others, there is a, a very uh, um, serious difficulty in finding people to hire. And therefore, they have to move abroad to, to find us or acquire companies to, to do that. And I think one uh, you know, very pragmatical thing that could be done today, um, and that will have uh, very important consequences uh, for the startup ecosystem, would be to make mandatory at school the uh, teaching of code. So we have very early on uh, engineers. Number two, um, still speaking about education, in business schools, all of them, you know, I, I've made one in Paris called HEC, and um, I was never taught anything about a startup. I was taught everything about marketing and finance and everything, but no, 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 nothing like what is running a startup, what is like hiring people, firing people, or, you know, uh, raising funds, etc., etc. And I think there is something fundamentally broken in how business is taught in business schools. And um, no matter how great they are, 
and for that, I think you know a few things should be um, uh, changed. Uh, the number one is I would make mandatory um, a project of creation of a company. So very early on, you understand what it means. Instead of doing an internship in a very large corporation, creating company is as rewarding uh, an experience. And number two, I think would be great to have product management as a syllabus, not something that is uh, taught after once you're doing some experience. Product management is probably the, the most complex role in a, in a startup, and it's a hybrid of business and, and project management and sometimes some engineering. And I think business school should have something that is um, designed around teaching people how to manage a product, what it means to understand a product and how to design one. And uh, if those two things happen, I can guarantee that in less than 10 years, there will, there will be a very strong competitor to Silicon Valley in Europe. Perfect. Moving to Italy, I think I'm a, I probably introduced Fabrizio because I'm biased because he's one of my best friends. And so, you know, and uh, most of the things I've done, we did together. So um, just to wrap it up, his, uh, his, his experience, is a serial entrepreneur. He started a, a lot of cool companies, right? Um, I just pay uh, for Numbol, actually, Michel is an investor of that, and then um, the latest one that I'm not involved is Talk TV, right? So Fabrizio, what are your three recommendations for? Yeah, so uh, I've been in, in Silicon Valley for the last 16 years, and I have the uh, luxury of having teams in uh, Europe, so I, I'm able to see what they do there and while, how we do things here. Uh, one of the... Uh, Things I see in uh, Italy, I, I take one example, which is my developer in Ragusa, Italy, which is in Sicily. Uh, every time he has to do uh, an upload of a release of our product uh, into the Apple Store, it takes him an hour and a half uh, because his internet connection is not good. Uh, and that's not uh, uncommon. There are, in the major cities in Europe, you have very good uh, internet connection, but in a lot of places, it's very hard to get a good internet connection. And so the, the digital divide, uh, it's a major blocker for me, uh, and definitely in, in other countries as well, but in Europe is one of the things where politicians, in my opinion, should come in and make sure that uh, as you have electricity, you have fast internet. Because the beauty of a lot of places we uh, grew up in, in Italy and Europe in general, they are fantastic. I mean, there are great places and you wanna stay there. A lot of people wanna stay there. Uh, they don't want to move. Uh, a lot of Italians actually don't like to move. They like to stay close to mommy. And, uh, and developing software from there could be really, really good uh, if you could do it. And so what politicians, in my opinion, can do is working very hard to make sure everybody has access to uh, a very fast internet. The second thing is, if I look at the US and Silicon Valley in particular, it's not the Americans making Silicon Valley. It's us coming from somewhere else. Uh, quite often, if you look at the numbers, one of the founders, two of the founders are not Americans, definitely not from California anyway. I've met three or four since I moved here in 99. Uh, and I don't know how many there are here, but it'd be uh, interesting to uh, do a test. One thing that we don't do in Europe is get people to come in and start companies. Uh, the beauty of Silicon Valley is that we get the best of the best of the best. And they come here because they're looking for uh, a challenge. and it is hard to go to Europe in many uh, cases. And I, I can tell you that people that are in the valley, they end up going to Chile instead of going to Italy or France or other places where they probably will prefer uh, because it's easier. And so that's regulation that is visa to, for people who want to start a company. So it's not only helping people that live there, it's helping people that come in and start a company. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Google has hired a good amount of people, although one of the founders was not. American because they allowed him to come here. And so it's a good policy to get smart people. I know immigration is an interesting topic these days in, in Europe, but I think for the high tech, there's no question that I will help. The third thing is just for politicians, so everywhere in Europe is just to get out of the way. Uh, and I, they don't like that, but that's part of what Silicon Valley is about. We don't need politicians. We actually need someone to uh, not build up barriers to enter, we break rules here. And, uh, and you can see of the startup in Silicon Valley how hard 
uh, time they're getting in Europe in many places where regulation is just blocking them. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't think the government and politicians will help that much. What I'd love to see is that they don't prevent us from succeeding. Thank you. Closing our panel with Andrew J. Scott, uh, six startup founder, plenty of experience as entrepreneur in residence, now turning into investors, 7%. Uh, okay, what are your two, three recommendations? Turn the, turn the mic on is probably my first recommendation. Um, so a lot of um, what I've done is through the prism of early stage startups, both in the startups I've done and the investments I do. And all big companies started small. Google started small. And with that in mind, I'd like to see um, the EU, EU Digital Commission and the EU not forget, not forget startups. The corporates, the incumbents, the lobbyists have access and have the experience to ensure that their interests are served by EU regulation and EU law. Um, but quite often, um, they don't take in, into account the, the, the startup's point of view. Um, you know, so two things really. One, to ensure that legislation, as it comes through, keeps in mind the needs of startups. And secondly, um, startups are defined by their rate of growth. It's about building a business that grows disproportionately quickly. What, what is the low-hanging fruit in the EU that can be implemented quickly, that can have a disproportionate effect on startup businesses and innovation? Um, because single things can have a huge impact. If you look at um, you know, the SEIS tax breaks in the UK and London, transform the number of investments fundamentally being done into startups. And there are lots of examples of where single initiatives can have a disproportionate impact on the ecosystem as a whole. Um, so, you know, I'll be trying to look after the little guy, basically. Okay, so our time for our panel is, is done, but I think we have plenty of good uh, topics to be discussed tomorrow, closed door with the Commission at Oettinger. I think hopefully we'll keep him busy, okay? Thank you, everybody, and uh, let's move to the next test.